Next up we come to BMW's Valve Tronic technology which is this big gizmo gadget on the intake camshaft on top of this head here. Now what this does is it essentially allows you to not have a throttle body and just adjust the valves themselves to open and close based on your throttle position from the driver's input. So for example instead of when you step on the gas it opens the throttle body to let air inside it's actually going to open up the amount that these valves lift. Although the camshaft is still turning at idle it's not really going to open up much but when you mash it down all the way it's it's going to let a lot of air in and open those valves up. The advantage to this is that you're going to have less pumping losses because you don't have to create a vacuum in the intake anymore. Therefore, you're going to have near atmospheric pressure going right into the intake for much more efficient and powerful combustion. Now the intake does have a backup throttle body in case the system fails with a traditional drive-by-wire throttle body, but the real motor that's driving all of this is this electric motor over here. So just like a throttle body motor, this is actually going to turn this shaft at the top here to adjust the amount of lift that the valves are getting down below. So you can see here this motor's got a worm gear on it, and then over here on this shaft, we have a semi-circular gear here which is what it's going to interface and as you turn that worm gear it's going to push that over there and as I push that it's going to rotate the shaft down here. Now to demonstrate how BMW's Valvetronic works we're going to take a look at how this mechanism works here. We've got our eccentric shaft over here which is powered by that spiral gear we saw earlier and it's got this cam profile on the outside here Now that's going to touch this roller rocker arm style of system here which has a double pivot and that's going to contact the actual camshaft. Now the angle of that is then going to affect the contact with the actual roller which is the one pressing down on the valve on this side and there's a hydraulic adjuster on this side. Now you can see at the current position that this camshaft is at its maximum profile here but the valve itself is actually at its minimum profile and that's because of the angle of this incidence here and here is what's bringing that valve to an almost closed position. Now in reality that would reflect a almost closed throttle because you don't want too much air to go into the engine when you're at idle. Now as I rotate this eccentric shaft here it's going to change the angle of the these two arms and thus push the valve down even though the camshaft position hasn't changed. And you can see at that position it presses the valve down to its maximum open position. Now in this setup you can get about 0.18 millimeters of minimum open valve, 9.9 millimeters of maximum open valve. Now although it kind of seems slow when I move that throttle body, this actually happens a lot faster because it's powered by this more heavier motor and that actually powers all 12 valves on the intake side. Now although these two valves are to the same cylinder, they're actually timed slightly differently so one opens a little bit earlier than the other but once you're at max throttle they both open the same amount and you can kind of tell that because this spring is a little bit wider open than this spring here which has fully open. Now of course a complicated system like this could fail and when it does fail luckily it does have a backup throttle body so you can limp home. Now just like a throttle body this motor here has to have some sort of feedback where that eccentric shaft is and that's where you have the position sensor for it at the end of the shaft here.